Hello everybody and welcome back to Cooking and Kids. In today's episode, I'm taking you to beautiful Alaska where we're going wild salmon fishing. I'm also going to introduce you to Chef Ella who will teach us how to make wild salmon patties. Traveling is always exciting, especially if you get to go to places that you have never been before. In just a few short hours and we were already flying over Alaskan territory. This land was definitely very different than California. It appeared that we picked the perfect time of the year to fly to Alaska. From beautiful weather to nature itself and the local residents, you felt as if everybody was there to welcome us. This was the first time for me to see moose in nature, and I was astonished how comfortable and at ease they were around humans. Seeing something like this definitely awaked a child in me. But beside friendly moose and a beautiful nature, there were many others who offered greetings upon our arrival. Day one and an early morning rise. We have a boat to catch and to meet up with a group of fishermen and our captain Mike who will be taking us to the open water fishing. By my standards, this was a tough weather, but our Captain Mike didn't seem to think anything of it. This bumpy two-hour ride was a perfect opportunity to share fishing stories among ourselves and to get ready for what's to come. And then out of nowhere, our motors get tangled in seaweed. Oh, they're right with us. Oh, God. Just like with moose, this was my first encounter with the wild orcas. All I could think at this moment were my children who I left in California and to whom I am the only parent. Needless to say, I was scared. I have seen way too many orcas hunting on Discovery Channel. Thanks to a knowledgeable captain, everything was back in order quickly and we were back on our way to fishing. To preserve natural supply, fishing in Alaska is strictly regulated. There are rules and regulations which control how many fish and which size fish is caught by any person during any fishing season. You got a fish on your rod here. Okay, come in, come in. I want to see the fish. And then it was my turn to catch my first salmon ever. There's a silver salmon. Woohoo! What was that? What was that? I said, Woohoo! Alright, <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's our captain for today. Thanks, we made sure that everybody we'll got some fish. Yeah, so captain far. Mike. Thank, thank you. And how's the rest of the crew doing? Everybody having fun? Oh, ah, so, so we are heading now to um, fish for halibut. Top secret spot. That's what Captain Mike. Yeah. No, no, no. We're not telling you where we're going. <laughs> All right. Good time to have a little snack, have a break, warm up because some of us are super cold and wet. Yes, very wet. Yeah, I don't know. These boys are tough. Minnesota, Minnesota, Minnesota tough. All right. And so we have a Colorado over there snacking on some healthy nuts and Southern Oregon. Southern Oregon. Jacksonville. Jacksonville, okay, and Mark? Another Colorado. Oh, okay. And then we got Arkansas in the back there. Okay, 
Okay, and we have our um, uh, helper today. Uh, Bobo. Bobo is, he's native, he's local. He's an Eskimo. And just like that, the topic changed from fishing to what do we love the best about our states and what is it that we like the most about our country. Hi, I'm Mark, and what I like best about my country is our freedoms that are provided by a lot of people, and I'm willing to fight for that to protect it from uh, all threats, foreign and domestic, which we seem to have a lot of. And I'm trying to instill that into my grandchildren as well to uh, fight and stand up for what they need. And that means protecting the innocent. There's a line in the Constitution, in the Declaration of Independence, that says, uh, basically, for those who have the ability to, they have the responsibility to defend and protect. And so, because we have that ability, we have that responsibility. It goes back in. in it's pretty cold for the girl, Southern California girl here in Alaska. One of the best things you can do is to go fishing with a bunch of boys. And I tell you, I've been very lucky with everything that we caught today. And uh, fishing is easy because I got a bunch of guys here taking care of me and making sure that um, this is a, a fun experience. So for all of you young girls out there who are thinking about um, starting a new hobby, Think about hunting, think about fishing, and think about doing interesting things like this. Catching a fish is a pretty awesome thing. Uh, spending time in nature is going to give you a whole different appreciation and perspective for the whole ecosystem. And just being in nature and harvesting food out of it will want to preserve it and in some ways uh, get involved in seeing that this fragile and unique ecosystem continues to live on. Lift, 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 lift. Right here to me, right over my head. There we go. I was one. We caught our limit, and this concludes our day of fishing on the sea. We're tired and cold, and everybody's feeling exhausted except Bobo, who continues to work with the fish in preparation for fish and chips. Today is another day and another fishing adventure. We have another boat and another captain, and I'm talking about this one. This fishing trip required getting up before five as well, but it was worth it. For a moment, stillness and beauty of this river made me forget about fishing altogether. Soon, we met up with other fishermen and we were back on task of catching fish. In this case, we were catching sakai salmon for our special recipe Chef Ella will prepare tonight. Right, perfect. Yeah. So that is your sakai. That's what we're after. That's one of those fish, size fish we're after. Focus of my charitable work is to help reconnect families and communities over shared passion of food. And I was enjoying seeing families in the nature, spending quality family time together while learning important skill like fishing is. Now being a cooking show, I think it's about time I introduce you our chef and to get in the kitchen and start cooking. It's hard to believe that uh, just the last week uh, I was in Temecula in my own kitchen and in a matter of a couple of days I am in Alaska cooking with these lovely ladies. So life is very unpredictable and um, if you're open to it, it can be lots of fun. So younger people have the energy, but the old people have the skill. So this is a tight, tight competition here. <laughs> Yeah, 
special sauces. Okay. Uh, <laughs> parsley is definitely key when it comes to uh, fish. I know because I love using parsley. It brings a lot of freshness and a lot of flavor. Mm -hmm. So not to mention that it's really good for you. I absolutely love what you're doing here, uh, and I'm just wondering uh, what is the what is the thing or the passion that drives you to do this? Well, part of it is just that it's my family's business, and I get to be up here and spend time with my grandpa, and that's really special to me. And it's that our relationship has evolved throughout the years I've been here, and. My other favorite part about it is getting to meet all of our guests that come from all over the world and, and get to know them and what they're about and be a part of their vacation and, and make it special for them. So I think it's really cool. So there are a lot of young, young people in America today who are facing a, a struggle to figure out what do I do with my life? You know, I, I'm educated, I'm capable, and what, uh, what can I do that makes sense? So how does this make sense? You love people, you love your grandpa, but in the long term, uh, what would you? What, what's the message that you would you would uh, like to share with your generation? Should they look yeah. in different uh, jobs, different alternative careers? Yeah, I mean, for me, when I first started up here, it wasn't like I wasn't like thinking of it as being something long term. I wanted to just come out for the summer and work and see how I liked it and. The more I came back, the more I felt really passionate about this place. So I would say, like, find something that you're passionate about and that you really want to be a part of because I have found that here and it's really, really special and it's like, it's uh, this place is always going to be a part of who I am and I think that's, like, I don't think a lot of people find that in, in jobs these days, so. So there's a lot of soul that comes with the work. Oh yeah. I see there's a lot of gi soul giving when it comes to customers, sending to people, bringing people to nature, uh, getting them engaged in the nature, mm -hmm. uh, being uh, hospitable. Or then there's another part of your soul that I see it's uh, engaging with your tradition and with, your, with the history of your family. So uh, it, that's going to feel really good. It does, yeah, absolutely. I mean, my grandpa's owned this place since the 70s, early 70s, and like I obviously wasn't alive back then, but uh, just being a part of it now and seeing how it's evolved, even from when I was a kid mm -hmm. to now, is it's been really cool to be a part of that. And even my mom, she worked here when she was my age and, and growing up, so like carrying on the traditions. And and my brother worked here, and I had some cousins who worked here as well. So having it be a family business and and having it really, it's going to be passed down to the family as well. I think that's really special. Do you see your daughter one day taking over this kitchen? <laughs> oh, or your gosh. son? I don't know. That's, I don't want to talk. <laughs> a lot of young people today are expecting a, a, a easy, quick and easy life. They expect a lot to make a lot of money very quickly. And uh, they want to enjoy the life in their 30s that's usually designed for people in their 50s and mm -hmm. 60s. So you're working hard and I'm sure money comes sometimes you, you do really well and sometimes you don't. What would you tell to uh, our young viewers when it comes to making money? Uh, or not making enough? I mean, Sorry. you have to work hard to make money. That's what I've learned and that's what I've learned here is like, whether it's manual physical labor or, or mental labor, like it's gonna cost a lot to, to make what you want. Like that's, I think hard work pays off. So you have to apply yourself. Yep, absolutely. And then every year is fruitful. And if I'm right. Yeah, and you have to push through those hard times too. Like you can't just give up and try something new, stick with it. So uh, this particular year has been challenging for so many businesses. Uh, COVID uh, has uh, shut down many businesses and I'm learning some of your neighbors here have closed altogether, yet you remain open. Mm -hmm. So how are you managing to stay open? Well, I think one thing that helps is that we are a fairly small business. So a lot of the other businesses in this area have a hundred employees that they had to bring in and, and they just couldn't ha get the resources. And so we being a small business can staff, we're not fully staffed, but we're doing what we can. And we have a lot of loyal customers as well, people who come back every summer, every other summer, and that really helps as well. So I'm listening and I'm thinking, uh, it's, it's kind of simple. It's, uh, it goes back to uh, supporting local small businesses, family-owned businesses, mm -hmm. because that's how businesses survive. You know, you put the right pillars 
you know, and in a business, they will stand. Family yeah. will stand together, oh and I think that's something that whole country can uh, try to um, incorporate more into uh, into business and our mindset about doing business. Yeah. So that's awesome. The hard-working crew is about to arrive, so we better get going with our food tonight. I did some pepper, and this is a Old Bay seasoning. It's a really good like seafood seasoning. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to do some lemon pepper. So this is all by taste, right? Oh yeah. Okay. We'll see how it goes. I have no doubt. You have a good fish. I I tasted some of that fish, and it tastes. So good, I think. Yeah, Basically. I find, I think with fish, like, simple is better, like... If you have a good fish. Yeah, it's, yeah. it does depend on, on the quality of your fish, but this is all fresh salmon from the river today, so... And so how long are you going to cook this, um, Ella? Probably like 20 minutes until so you they want all, it to be all down. Okay. Yep. Very good. Oh, okay. Lots of garlic. Oh, lots of garlic cooking. Good, you're my kind of girl. I love garlic. <laughs> Very good. We come from a Italian family. So oh, you do? Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay, my kids, they make fun of us how much garlic we really? eat. Really? Oh, I love garlic. And this is Worcestershire sauce, Worcestershire, however you say it. See, that's a one word uh, in English I cannot. I always, cannot. I just, Worcestershire, I just <laughs> mumble it. <laughs> Good, that makes me feel better. Uh, this is some hot sauce. Okay. Give it a little zinc to it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And then I'm gonna do some lemon juice. I like that idea. Lemon and fish is always good. Yeah, they are really, they pair up really well. Mm -hmm. Good. And then this will just cook down for a little while. Okay. Um, all right, I guess I'll start with mayonnaise. We're just gonna kind of do this to kind of like hamburger where you do it to, to the right consistency. So mayonnaise. Add some more creaminess. Is that what mm -hmm. it is? Okay. Um, do how many some, eggs do you have there? This is, I think, seven or eight eggs, but I'm going to do about half of it and okay. see where it gets me. So you are, you're going for a certain consistency, obviously. Yeah, you just kind of want it to stick together enough to make the patties. Okay, so not too moist. And then these are some breadcrumbs. Okay, quite a few. So you add moisture and then you add breadcrumbs to absorb the moisture and this all creates a right texture. Yep. Okay. And then this is some Dijon mustard for flavor. Let's see where that gets us. Dijon. We're just going to mix it all together. While Ella was focusing on delivering dinner to her crew tonight, I was admiring this young woman on so many levels. I would like to see that we can raise more independent, family-oriented, and uh, hard-working young individuals right, in America. So I'm gonna put this in the fridge and let it chill, just so it all kind of comes together a little bit, and then we'll form the salmon patties. To stay warm. And now the dinner was done, it was time to call the crew in. This was so wonderful to observe, and I couldn't help myself but to wonder how many employers sit down to share a meal with their employees at the end of the working day. There are all kinds of families and communities out there. And I'm a firm believer that if we would treat people around us as our extended family, we will all be better off. <laughs> I'm Joe Connors, 78 years old, soon to be 79, and I live here in Sterling, Alaska, on the Kenai River. We actually had seven boys and a woman in the service at the same time. I had an aunt who was a Marine in the 50s, 1950s, and then I had three uncles all serving on the aircraft carrier, the Oriskany, on the fantail gun, which they weren't supposed to do because of the Sullivan boys getting killed all together on one aircraft carrier. But So your family has, yes.
Yeah, yeah my brother served. Yes. I don't see how I'd ha have what I have and be where I am if people before me didn't do what they did. Yeah. Do more people think that it should be free and have no values and have no, you know, truth and we can just say anything and I'm not responsible for whatever I say. Just make it up as I go. Change the words. Change the language. I mean, right now we're it's a it's a critical time, really, really critical. You gotta have a vision of where you want to go. You gotta figure out what the steps are to get there. You gotta start. You have to start somewhere. So like a small step, then maybe a little bit bigger step the next time, and more steps. And you got to be successful and get some rewards in the beginning to keep doing it. You know? I enjoyed exchanging thoughts with Joe, but even more than that, I truly enjoy watching him present his special collection to me. Joe is an avid collector of fishing reels. And for those who wouldn't pay a close attention, you would think that his collection is about the reels. Well, it's not. Looking at him and uh, listening him sharing his stories, I can tell this was about memories, about tradition, about dreams, and about the times when every little thing mattered. Oh, uh, I am today living out one of my biggest dreams. I'm going on a flight, and not just that God provided the most uh, a beautiful plane. I also got some best pilots to to make the dream possible. Yeah, it's not that good. <laughs> not that good. <laughs> and so here it goes another first for me. takeoff. Ever since my early childhood, I wanted to be a pilot. Matt is taking me to see a Kenai River from above and to go glacier hunting. The Kenai River is even more spectacular from above. Oh, by the way, this is an exact spot where we were yesterday fishing for the Sakai salmon. The beauty of our planet and nature around us should never stop to amaze us and to inspire us. As a child, the only way to witness such a beauty was through encyclopedias. I could have never imagined that one day I would be here and I would be resting my eyes on Alaskan majestic beauty and its glaciers, turquoise waters. We flew closer to the glaciers, the watercolor and the nature's lushness was even more intensified. Below is what I would call a glacier delta, where glaciers drain their nutrient-rich waters. Scientists estimate that Alaska has about 100,000 glaciers and the longest tidewater glacier is 76 miles long. Kids, did you know that glaciers are huge masses of ice that flow like a very slow river? They are also the largest reservoirs of fresh water on the planet. The signature bright blue color of glaciers come from a dense and well-compacted ice. Today, glaciers cover around 10% of the Earth's total land area. Also, they can be hundreds of thousands of years old, which makes them a perfect time capsule for scientists. I could have just stayed here and fly for days. During this flight, I started to think if there might be still time to get a pilot license and to change my profession to a world explorer. 
but for now it was time to land and get back to salmon migrations. One can say that most of Alaskan magic comes from its clean, crisp and oxygen-rich waters. Everywhere in a forest, creeks are coming together to create amazing cascades, which are perfect staircase for salmon. Witnessing salmon migration was one of the most amazing thing I have ever seen in my life. And for families out there who are watching this program with their kids, I would encourage you to plan trips like this with your kids and with your family. In the era when a lot of us, especially our children, are spending so much time in front of devices, I just want to remind you that there are places like these out there. And I would encourage you to take your children on a vacations and road trips and reconnect as a family and reconnect with the nature as well. These lessons and these memories will benefit your children for years to come. It's hard to believe the fun is almost over and it's time to go back home. But I'm going home with so many wonderful memories of Alaska and Alaskan people, of nature and this beautiful country of ours and everything that it has to offer. My charity is focused on reconnecting families and communities in America. And I hope that this episode was a, a great window into all the blessings that we have as a nation and as individuals. And I want to encourage you to step out of your homes, to go out there, to connect with friends, with people, with nature, and with your dreams. So get your kids and grab your bags because there's so much life out there that's waiting for you.